As we pick up in chapter 3 of 2 Timothy, Tim Beshner talked about this idea of fleeing the youthful passions, this idea of go away from, run from things that are not good for our hearts, things that are not good for our souls. And Paul continues this theme to Timothy in chapter 3. And we're going to hop into verse 1 right now. But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. Now, it's pretty clear in the Gospels that Jesus doesn't want us to worry about when the last day is coming. That's not our concern. But Paul says here, in the last days, you're going to see many people reflecting these, reflecting these items. Now, when I think about myself, I have moments of pride. I have moments of arrogance, disobedience. I'm ungrateful all the time. I'm unappeasable. I'm slanderous. Most of these things apply to me. So how do we separate an ungodly person from a godly person? And it comes back to this idea of Christ and the imputed righteousness that we have. And the key here in verse 5, it says, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power. And this is the idea that people oftentimes can spiritually on the outside act like they're loving God and following God, but in the inside, behind closed doors, behind the scenes, they're not following Christ and what Christ calls us to. And so what does it look like to be a true Christian? Well, Paul says in Colossians 3, 2, he gives us this idea of what Christianity looks like. He talks about setting our mind on things above. What that literally means is Paul is telling us, look up, look up to heaven, look up to Jesus, look to him for his faithfulness to us. The reality is all of these things, lovers of self, lovers of money, pride, arrogance, a disobedience. This is stuff that we will continue to struggle with. But the theme of the story of the Bible is that Jesus' faithfulness is what we rest in, not our own. So how do we bear fruits of Christianity? To live in repentance, to live in faith, to flee from these things because Christ gave us the power, not the power in ourselves. As chapter 3 goes on, he ends with this classic verse, and he says this, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, he equipped for every good work. What this means is that we can't save ourselves, but the scriptures are active, living, and breathing. They can give us the correction we need. They can give us the reproof that we're looking for. And as we become more like Christ, it is because of Christ's power, Christ's Holy Spirit, and Christ's story that changes our hearts.